Hey guys, welcome to Morphin Monday. This is where we're gonna do a Power Ranger watch along with a different Ranger guest every single week, an episode of their choosing, so we can dive deep into Power Rangers, into the lore, and what was going on either behind the scenes or ADR or just the experience all together. And first and foremost, our first guest is the Power Ranger, arguably the greatest Power Ranger of all time, Jason David Frank, good buddy of mine. Jason, how you doing, sir? I'm doing good, man. I'm really excited about this. I'm Me really too. Excited about this. So it's first and foremost, you picked Power Ranger Zeal, which is not what I expected you to pick. I yeah. thought for sure you were going to go Mighty Morphin, but you picked Power Ranger Zeal uh, season one, episode number nineteen, challenges. Why'd you choose that one, Jason? Uh, well, my brother, you know, he was he was on the show, and uh, I think it was a lot of good memories for me. People ask my favorite episodes. I do got the Green Ranger. Green with evil is super cool. But uh, since my brother's gone, I think uh, a lot of people out there are asking about my brother, dressing up as my brother. So I thought I'd pick this one to kind of share some, uh, some of his tough stories and challenges to become an actor. Now, I know that your uh, brother got the start because he started working on the crew with you guys, right? Is that right? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. correct. He, uh, he, I mean, we did numerous jobs. I worked with him when I was like 17. We did like carpet, we laid carpet. We did, uh, and all while I was in karate, we worked at a company called ProTech and he was kind of the boss of it. So he said, hey, let me bring my little brother on. And I went on and uh, came in to help him. And it was good money because it was carpet and all that other stuff. So I worked with him for, you know, a couple years and he was in karate. I trained with him. So there's a lot of things being an actor is, is quite different than laying carpet and, uh, you know, sparring and uh, fighting. So that's why I picked this one, because I think it was more of a uh, sharing experience for people that want to become actors, something a little different, someone jumping into Zio uh, right, right in the beginning, but he was also behind the scenes. So that's what was, that's what was cool about it. He's worked behind the scenes. So I used to see his face all the time when he'd make faces at me, try to make me laugh, being an older brother. So, you know, having an older brother on set while you're filming is not the best, so it takes <laughs> double concentration to ignore your brother and stick with the scene and then afterwards, quietly, you know? So there's a lot of good memories, and all of a sudden, he became an actor, and that's where the story changes. Now, did this is right before the, uh, the Gold Ranger kind of like yeah. showed up on the scene. Was there, I remember you talking about this a little bit, this could have been a little test for him, possibly to fill that role as the Gold Ranger before they uh, signed on Austin, right? For sure. it was. That's the way it was going to go. We talked to people. We were saying, hey, let's uh, put your brother out there. God, he looks just like you. He's, you know, and he was a good actor. Uh, and they put him out there to see if this is something they would do. And, and most probably at the same time during that, they were deciding which is going to be better, you know, because they couldn't get an instant audience reaction. So if they got an instant audio reaction, he most probably would have been the Gold Ranger. But then again, you know, Austin was popular and they brought him back as the Gold Ranger. So I think everyone was surprised. I knew what was going on at the time. I was really uh, aiming and cheering for my brother. I think they made, uh, although, you know, Austin is Austin, but I think they made a, a wrong decision at that time because my brother had that charisma. And um, like I said, audience couldn't really feel it out. But when it played and then years later, probably like ah oh, that would have been interesting because Austin come back anytime I mean came back to his gold ranger came back into the movie so I was really pulling for my brother but again there was some acting challenges and some challenges that my brother was going through like most people with the financial thing which he uh shouldn't have uh, shouldn't have gone there especially with Savon so I had to live it with uh several rangers and live it out with my brother a little bit too but uh it was it was interesting it was fun working with my brother and so that's the reason why I picked this. Also, the reason why I picked Zeo is um, I'm wearing red today. I don't have any Zeo stuff behind me, as you can see. But Zeo's becoming a little more popular out there than I thought. People want Zeo prints. And I'm like, oh, Zeo prints. And I ran across some really uh, cool pictures of my brother that was signed. And that's an Antwi. I got stuff signed. And that's oh, rare. Really? You know, they, they, uh, they're in a better place now, but it's very rare to have that, especially in a Power Ranger collection that I will never get rid of. But uh, seeing my brother's autograph was uh, was pretty cool. But also, when I started the show, we looked very similar. We had the long hair. He had the long hair. I was filming like crazy. Someone came up and said, oh, I saw you at Albertsons. And I said, Albertsons, what? Supermarket. I was like, 
I wasn't an Albert. So what, what was I doing there? They said, you were doing an appearance, bro. You don't remember? Like, you signed for my little kids. And I said, no. A newspaper came out and it showed my brother. Tommy, Jason, David, Frank, Tommy Oliver goes to Albertson, you know, to sign autographs. So my brother was quickly thinking, I could probably be a body double right now. Let me uh, go That's do this appearance. Great. So when I found out, I was like, Ugh. there's a very few people that know me personally. So it's like coming up and going, hey, uh, I know everyone thinks you're Jason, but uh, – I'm going to let this one slide, you know? And he was just doing it because, yeah, that's just my brother. He just, uh, you know, he didn't think the show was going to go anywhere. Uh, and he was the first one I showed this to. I had a pilot. I remember sitting in his apartment. I remember the car I was driving. I was remember, me, we were close, but he's just an older brother. I remember I played the VHS, and I sat there. He was sitting like this, and he was watching. It was just a super crazy show. And remember, he's older, so it's not for kids. And then. The credits rolled, and I kept, like, I wasn't in the pilot, you know, and uh, there was a different Yellow Ranger, but uh, I was watching, and the credits rolled, and he kept sitting there, and then it's VHS, and then it ends. I'm like, he didn't take the eyes off the screen. I said, what do you think? He's like, this is just really stupid. <laughs> and, uh, it, but it's what all Hollywood said. You know, he was right. just giving his honest opinion. So that's what's funny when I'm like, oh, hey, I thought the show was stupid, man. Oh, no, I actually like it now. I'm like, oh, why you like it now? You know, so then he became, and they became, uh, you know, uh, you know, Doug Sloan and everybody said, hey, I think we should pull him in there. I think how we should kind of like test it out, see what he does. And everyone thought he was going to be the Gold Ranger, including myself. But um, when he wasn't, I wasn't disappointed. I'm there as an actor doing a job, but doing you my passion. When you left the show in Power Rangers Turbo, was there any ever talks of having your brother replace you? Or was it always going to be so? No, it wasn't, because my brother took that route of uh, the route that most people take on a peace conference. So it was one of those routes where it was like, okay, well, that's not going to happen. And when I left Turbo, the, when I left Turbo, I went to Saban just because I really tried to get Saban to come on set. I'm like, you know, an ears and eyes type of guy. So a lot of people were like, I can't believe you met Saban. They thought like I was a golden boy. I said, well, Saban came here all the time. But once the show started taking off, he was too busy. He was running a business. Not that he didn't care. So everyone was like, we never met Heim. We never met Heim. I said, don't worry. I'm going to go in and take care of that. So I went in. I remember exactly where I was. I sat down. I talked to him. And talking to a boss like that instantly said, uh, I don't need to go to set. What do I need to go to set for? I said, because people are talking. I said, you need to go to set and tell people you're doing a good job. Because those people were, I mean, definitely a fraction paid of what we were paid. Uh, and so I just wanted to get him going. I remember him saying, I don't need to do that. Are you coming in and asking for more money? I said, no, I'm not coming in and asking for more money. I'm asking for you to go to set because I said I was going to come get you. He said, I'll just pay you more money. I said, you know what, Heim? I'm not for sale. And I don't want more money. We need this. We need pats on the back. So I'm leaving. And I remember... He says, you leave? And I says, um, let's pass the powers to someone else. I can't handle it right now. And so I left. And the minute I left, I remember him saying, Jason, if you quit, I will fire everyone. And I remember looking back, and I remember going, ugh. So I went back to set, and I was like, I, it didn't go as well as I thought. I'm leaving the show. Now, some of those actors could be watching and say, that didn't happen, but they don't know my side. There's yeah. stories that, like, Johnny's told on Entertainment Tonight about the CIA. I'm like, I don't remember that story. And the Steve tells a story. I'm like, I don't remember that story. So I think we're on our own heads and doing our own lives. But that's the reason why I left. And also now stating that there's a lot of young people. I say young, 20, 30 year olds, 40, whatever. I had, I did cameos for a three year old. Literally last night, three, 16, 19, 21, 25. 30, 35, all birthdays. And so it changed from a little kid to an older kid. And I think I wanted to set a standard at that time to tell people, if you want to leave your job, you've got to give two weeks notice. Yeah. You've got to give those notice and say, hey, you know, have that, you know, pride. And, you know, a lot of people, Dave, we all had that where we're, hey, let's Amy Joe too. We just didn't quit. And that's, and that's kind of like where my <laughs> brother, where my brother, uh, went a little wrong on that because me and him were quite different. So he saw me make more money and it was like, Hey, I want that kind of money. And they're like, uh, what'd you say? Have you ever heard this <laughs> noise before? Click. And I told Eric, you shouldn't have done that, you know? And, uh, so anyway, it was, uh, it was a quite interesting experience. Everyone knew him, uh, Catherine, everybody, everybody knew my brother on set. 
But what people don't know is that he left behind the scenes. Like he quit behind the scenes. It wasn't like, oh, let's just transfer. He, it was a problem. He's like, I don't want to do this no more. I want to be an actor. I quit. So he wow. quit. So I said, hey, dude, being an actor is not that easy. No, no, I'm going to be an I, I see you. I can totally act. It's no problem at all. I'm going to be an actor. Not even Power Rangers. And so I know how tough it is. And I went, oh, okay. Do you want to be an actor? Yeah, okay. I talked to Doug. I talked to everyone. I said, let's bring my brother on. He looks just like me. You write a story and you figure out the story. So it went total, uh, you know, he came from, you know, where he came from. We were, we had a little bit of native, you know, American. It just went completely different than I thought, but it worked. And um, so he got his acting job and, uh, you know, he did that for a few episodes. And then it, it was kind of during that time of, of okay, you're going to become the gold ranger. Ah, we got some issues. What's the issue here? Regardless of what I said or not to anybody. Right. Um, and I just make it very clear on Wikipedia. I was going through that. God knows why the other day uh, I was looking up Regis and Kathy Lee and I was looking at this stuff and I read Wik Wikipedia and it, it, you know, it said that, you know, everybody kind of went on strike sort of thing and me, Dave and Amy, we pulled out the last minute and hosed some other people. That's not how it went from day one. I did not want to risk it. Look, I'm 19 years old, making a lot of money, 20. There was one point where I was making like 50, $60,000. I wrote a check for taxes for 212000 I wrote a check one, one year for that. So it was like, uh, you know, so for me, I wasn't eating peanuts. I came from, you know, owning a karate school, laying carpet. I had 18 jobs before I started. So being in the lights and acting and actually getting paid and doing karate and being a superhero, it was, it was a win-win. And that's why I met Bat in the Sun. It was all free. I told Aaron, I'll come for free. I'll come for free. Bloodshot? I'll do it for free. No, I I do it. Very I like lucky. Bloodshot. I'm not gonna lie. I like you better than Vin, no offense, Vin Diesel, but I do like you better than Vin Diesel. His bloodshot. Oh, thank you, man. And I thought the what what Aaron did is I thought that it looked like straight out of comic books. It looked like the characters jumped at you, and you got a little bit of uh, everything. And then you know, well, me and Ciara got booted off the panel in New York. That's a whole different story. Uh, you know, they just wanted to. The band, me and Ciara, they put a cease and desist for like a million dollars. I'm like, guys, I just paid five hundred dollars for a Valiant jacket that I have in the in the closet. I, I I go all out of the way, so that's why with Aaron, I just always work for free. I, honestly, as crazy as it sounds, I love the fans and I see the bigger picture. My karate schools is the bit is the business thing. People ask, oh, you know, what did you do here? You get royalties. I made millions on karate schools because I'm passionate and anytime my students can quit anytime. So I didn't lock anyone in long-term agreements. I've made millions from that. So this was just fun. Comic cons were just fun. I didn't have to make a living on it, which therefore it became fun, but challenging and hard at the same time. Six days a week, non-union shows, no right. rules, but I like it that way. Me and Bat in the Sun shot non-union, super, super, uh, Superpower beat down, and all of a sudden we turned Union on Valiant, and I didn't like it because I told Aaron, "What are we doing? Taking right. a break for what? We got to give the crew break." I'm like, "This ain't Bat in the Sun. Bat in the Sun is worth 15 hours. It's called Super Body Beatdown. You know what I mean?" <laughs> and uh, so, so it was it was different, but again, it was it was you know non-union. Some seasons were Union, very low budget uh, Union. For me, I didn't care. I got a chance to work on set with my brother. That we got into a lot of a lot of trouble in the snowboarding that uh, episode because he uh, encouraged me to, Hey, let's uh, snowboard. I said, no, nah, not now, man. That's when he worked behind the scenes. I believe right. no business, no business. He worked behind the scenes. Yeah. He wasn't on that one. Yeah. He's not but, in that episode. No, but he was working and the snowboarding one that he talked me into going in the snowboard off the ledge of this little thing. And I said, you sure? He goes, yeah, man, don't worry. Uh, you know, the crew won't miss me. We'll, we'll duck out. And so we snowboarded off this ledge and we got lost i got lost about two hours on set because we took you know we snowboarded so we took this back way and we didn't know which lift to take back up and i said dude oh my god you're my brother and you're getting me in trouble so i was two hours late to set and i'm never late so you know i, I gotta learn sometimes your bigger brother you know talk you into stuff and it sounded cool and i thought maybe we'll do like a five ten minute shred but it ended up going straight down this deep, almost like diamond hill that I just could not stop and get back up. So that's why it's uh, that's why I picked Zio because um, it just uh, means a lot. The Green Evil series, great. 
so many episodes, but I'll be honest with you, Joe, I haven't watched this episode since it's probably been out. I haven't watched it. I haven't watched it. It was just, uh, you know, I got little scenes and clips and editing, you know, I'm missing my brother videos, but I haven't seen it. And that's why I picked it because, you know, we don't, we don't view it a lot on tour. So I haven't seen it. So I'm, I'm really excited to see it. I mean, I was in it. You know, my brother was there. You would think I'd watch it over and over and over again because my brother was on it. But that was David Trueheart. That wasn't my brother that said, let's go off the side of the cliff and let's <laughs> snowboard. And uh, some of the other stories I'll tell you about uh, as we watch it. Um, but, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited, too. So let's get ready for that uh, right now, actually. We're going to do a countdown for everybody that's watching okay. at home because this is a Power Rangers watch along. Uh, we're going to count you guys down. Uh, and we're going to go from five and on one we're going to hit play. So that is on one. So okay. we're going to count it down right now. Five, four, three, two, one, play. All right. So we got the episode playing. Ooh. And it's funny because I told, I literally told Jason to uh, turn his volume off. And here I am with my volume on. There we Dude, go. Dude, I just slipped. There we got that slipped. classic Zio intro right now. Um, look, Jason, I really like this Zio intro for the simple reason is that that music was so like, I like that music because it's very like hard rock and more upbeat than the original theme song. What were your takeaways yep. from that original theme song for Zio? <laughs> Every theme song was catchy. Oh, wait. And, uh, you know, and I, and I look at that and I think of Jason, my brother. Jason, you're on mute. No, no, you, you turned oh. your volume down. I'm oh, on I mute. did? Oh, you did. there you are. <laughs> I'm, I did? Hello? Jason, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, there. That was me. That was me. I did turn it down. So, yeah, sorry. Uh, what did you think about that music? I thought it was great. Every music was very catchy. And the theme song was super cool. And, and my intro looking was from my brother's episode. So every time I see that, I think of my brother's episode. It is. That's right. That it is. was shot on that day. That completely is true. I didn't, I didn't even realize that because they, they built that up a lot. Now, there's Eric. And he's yeah. taller than you, right? He looks a lot taller yeah. than you. Dude, he's never been on a horse. <laughs> he couldn't get on there without that saddle. He was like, what do I do? How do I get on it? So I'm sitting there in my head thinking, okay. This guy, I still had that, you know, so I read the script. But this guy, this, this gentleman here that's playing uh, Sam, he was in when the, with the little kids when they were doing that uh, Zeo, getting the Zeo crystal. Uh, yeah. did you, were you familiar with the story already when they were transitioning right. from Mighty Morphin to Zeo? Like with the Man, kids? we got these scripts two weeks ahead of time. And uh, as I'm watching now, he's a great actor. I love the whole theme of uh, a Native American. I think they might have done that because the hair, but also, uh, you know, I, I, I love it. I think uh, it was something that was super cool. I still have people coming up to me, uh, you know, and, and thanking me. So I, I kind of embraced it. I kind of, you know, uh, accepted the Native uh, uh, American at that time because it was in my heart. But I do remember the horse, and my brother could not get on that horse. Yeah. And know, this was an Alpha Dulce. We shot this in Alpha Dulce. Now that's Sam, that's Sam Trueheart. Uh, from uh, Power Rangers Zeo. He was actually played by an actor named uh, Frank uh, uh, Saletto. Yeah. So I'm not sure if you remember Frank or not, but uh, yeah. He Frank, was I do because it was our last name. <laughs> I was going to say Frank, yeah. Jason, huh? Tommy, yes. So the DP was very, and, and, and animals. I was just saying the first time that I ever worked with animals, I worked with, you know, just seeing animals on set. It was a big thing having animals on set. And especially the snake and turbo, I had to carry that. But oh, it was great. interesting. That's why I think we don't we like to learn the story a couple of weeks out because it's interesting filming it, so it doesn't get old. Now, with this, uh, with the animals on set, when you guys had this, I know you were a non-union show, but I'm sure yeah. you guys had animal wranglers and, and protocols. Dude, and the, yeah, like when they the monkeys replaced the Vulcan skull, monkeys made more money than them. Although I was paid really well here, I've been here the long, but I was thinking Falcon. I was wondering if they were doing it as a falcon because the, you know, the falcon zord, or it's really written in there as the falcon. Hey, when you guys switched over to Zio, uh, did you? How hesitant were you to change costumes because those Mighty Morphin suits were so iconic? How hesitant were you guys? And when were you guys told that hey, we're moving this in a and going with another uh, Super Sentai series? Uh, well, I was excited. I mean, it was disappointing not having a shield just because I felt weird about it. But, uh, and I'm, I'm a big martial arts guy too. So I see a lot of different pads that they're using and everything like that. So it's funny to go back and watch this. Uh, but um, anyway, I, I liked it. I had a big star, five points, Z05. It was something different. Definitely weird being the red, 
uh, you know, because it was something that that uh, I never did before. But as you can see, the stories. I mean, we all had to wear different colors. Uh, you know, got Johnny wearing his color there, bulk and skull. Um, but yeah, they, they did. They took care of the animals really well, really well. It's just like Union. You're not going to see any different with animals. Now, with uh, with this cast, I, I, I would argue to say that this might be the best Power Ranger cast in history that's assembled on Zio. How well did you guys get along uh, outside of outside of shootings? You guys must have been together all the time. We were together all. <clears throat> Uh -oh. Sorry, don't hey, don't know hey, what happened there. No, uh, we were we were together all the time. And the boxing, I like this because I'm a big I'm big into boxing and karate. And uh, I thought it was when I saw this episode. I haven't seen this in a long time, but now watching it years later, it's like they got that style. But um, the the cast were great. I mean, uh, me, Narvi, Johnny Bosch would always do stuff. We'd go to the desert, we'd go shooting. Uh, Nakia was great. Everybody in here is just worked all the time. So we had no time to hang out like Sundays. Everybody's like, uh, so the times that we weren't and see, I wasn't in this part. Uh, so I had time off, had a day off now here. They all have days off, so we can't get together, you know, and, and this is Al Kudosi. I actually owned an airplane that was parked in the hangar near this place. So we were really, yeah, we were, I worked, I was a pilot. Uh, owned a little Cherokee and it was parked in Alcadosi. So every time I go out there in Cass State Park, I think, oh, Power Rangers, you know. So, um, but yeah, it was pretty, uh, get rid of this thing. It was pretty, pretty cool. So like when they're working, like I said, I had time off. So it was kind of hard. Now we all have days off. Sure. When, when they're working, except Johnny and other people. So the, the schedule definitely changed. But yeah, me and Johnny and Narvi, we're, uh, we were a, uh, a, uh, uh, the team of three, we'd always go out and do stuff together. Narvi would drive the tombstone and just get pancakes. Just we would like be like, "Where'd you go, tombstone? For what? Pancakes?" And he'd drive back. Me and Johnny were always like, "Okay." So we joke about that all the time. And like I said, when people see it, they're like, "God, I remember, I remember," and all this stuff. And <laughs> now but, here's um, Greg Bullock, who we don't hear a lot from. He hasn't been at a Morphicon yet. Can you tell me any fun stories about what? Greg Bullock? Play Lieutenant Stone. Um. You know, man, he was he was great. It was one of those those guys that uh, Lord, I'm watching this run on the run on the rocks. I remember running on the rocks. I was like, I don't want to slip. That's why I got those shoes on. But um, he was a good guy. Very just, just uh, just there. He loved his job. He was very mysterious. He would leave. Uh, on our part, he worked with uh, Jason and uh, Paul and uh, Narvi, uh, Jason and Paulie a lot. So I'm sure they hung out a little bit more. He was just really nice. I mean, he was a really nice guy. Uh, never had issues, always willing to work, as you see him now. Very, very excited about his role, and it was really refreshing to see that, an actor who just really got into it. So I haven't seen him. I'd love to see him, love to, love to get a chance to see him. Now, here's, here's something that's classic Bulk and Skull, the physical comedy. Yep. What were some of the stories uh, when you would see them on set would be like, what are you guys doing today? Oh, it, they, it, it, they were Bulk and Skull. There was no cut or action. It was like constantly – just, I got that superhero. What a pose. great shot that is. And that's green screen. Shot. I'm pretty sure it's green screen. But it was a classic, you know, Jason Narvi and Paul. It was, it was never, uh, it never ended. They were so funny, so entertaining. They were so loving. They always got along. And uh, it was just something that was uh, super cool. Now, you said you're a fan of boxing. And in this episode, we're going to see uh, Johnny display a little bit of boxing ability here. Yeah. Um, how how active – I know that you and Johnny were very active with your martial arts on sets, uh, but how active were you guys with boxing and different forms, different other forms of martial arts? Johnny was more uh, – you know, like a lot of guys, uh, I don't think that they – I think they're more like a Bruce Lee not getting ranks type of thing because there's uh, – there's, you know, for me, I was always behind an organization. But fun facts people don't know, Johnny uh, worked for me at my Tosa Kundo school, so he was one of the sifus that taught uh, students. So he would come in. Help me when I say work for me. Come in, help me. Worked under the uh, Tosa Kendo brand, uh, and uh, it was super cool. And Johnny actually helped me uh, draw the first logo of Tosa Kendo. My first logo, the Way of the Fighting Fist. He was actually the first one to draw this cool logo, and I made a patch, and we wore it at the school. So, um, you know, as far as uh, as far as active, he was always active to learn stuff. Um, and uh, you know, it's just a lot of people, different people that would go through an organization and get ranked. I think Johnny was really just didn't care about that. He just, you know, was more, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to be a student and not worry about that and do some cool fight scenes. So, uh, 
and I, I remember it was different having him as the green ranger too you know and and uh in this too green zeo so it was pretty cool of course that's all japanese footage uh every single thing you're seeing uh except the green ranger when i started in the beginning that was actually me fighting austin in the dark dimension like me in costume oh that was, was actually you in the costume me in costume things that you see me taking pictures with that american shield yeah that was me that, that was me really? i have the most helmet head time there is because that we had to film that scene in the dark dimension which was the evil green but and ernie let me tell you about him man uh r.i.p ernie this richard, guy yeah. loved it richard loved it man he loved it so much that he would i'd say beg but put me in coach put me in coach and they'd always uh and there was something he had to like get his way in a lot of episodes in the movie he just had to get his way in and he did he was so excited he practices one line and you know he's he was like uh, richard was like ernie he, he no. was uh super cool Fun fact about Richard, I used to see him when I was a little kid in wrestling events in L.A. all the time. And he would always have his, uh, uh, like, a denim uh, Saban jacket on uh, that he would wear oh. at wrestling events. So I'd see him all the time, and I was always too afraid to go talk to him because cause when I was a kid, man, all of you guys were like celebrities. So I never had the courage to go and talk to him. But I wish yeah. now, looking back, I would have. You're like me. I was the same way. My first uh, celebrity I met was Jeff Speakman. Jeff Speakman was a karate guy. I respect he went to Long Beach International. I was a competitor for Tommy. Uh, I was a competitor. He was competing. I was in awe. Jeff Speakman took fifth place. He didn't take first because of politics. And I was like, like, so cool. And he had Speakman on the back of his gi. And I said, hey, Speakman. And he turned. Yeah. And I froze up and walked away. <laughs> <laughs> froze up and walked away. I look at my pants, too. The, the, so, why am I wearing? I do wear my pants so high on this. And I wish I had that necklace, man. I wish I had that necklace. But that's the opening scene. That was the day we filmed the opening scene. So I was going to tell you about this necklace. So when I was a kid going through, like, middle school, I used to buy yin-yang uh, necklaces because you had yin-yang necklaces in uh, Mighty Morphin. So then I yep. bought like, an arrowhead necklace because of Zio. So it's funny. I was going to ask you, do you still have any of those necklaces? I, I had the fish one. I'm sure I have some in storage. But another fun fact, this was a yin-yang, just this. Yin Yang and Dragon that I've had on my whole, not all this stuff, just the Yin Yang. So you'll see in Turbo movie that when I'm reaching for uh, the little guy that I like, E.T., uh, Larigo, I'm yeah. reaching for Larigo, you'll see a bunch of dirt on my arm. We didn't have time to do makeup, so I rubbed dirt on it. So when you watch that episode, I'm like, hey, Larigo, you see my arm all dirty is because I had to hide my tattoos. And fun fact, my brother had the same tattoo on this episode that we had to cover it up with makeup or wear long sleeves. Now you had, so you've had tattoos even when you were on Power Rangers. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. The, the yin and yang, they had to uh, cover, they had to cover that up. That's why long sleep, very easy. Just one yin and yang. And my brother got the same one with the dragon claws. Whoever's tattoo artist was needs work. It wasn't as good as mine. <laughs> it needed work. But yeah, we had them. That's why most of the time I, I wore, uh, I wore long sleeves and, and I can't find the episode of Dino Thunder, but I got RSKA tatted on my stomach and we were like, Jumping like, oh, and you can see my alert. My shirt just peek up, and I want to see that episode. You can barely see oh, my great. tattoos as, 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 you know, oh, you know. So, yeah, I had the tattoos. This one, a lot of times, long sleeve, but it was one tattoo, easy to cover. My brother had the same tattoo called Twin Dragons, and that's why he had the school named Twin Dragons because we felt like Twin Dragons with the Frank brothers, Fearless Frank brothers is where we got our name before we started the show. I'm going to find, find that screenshot of you on, uh, on Dino Thunder, and I'm going to send it to you one of these days. Now, here's the thing. Now, in this scene, uh, a lot of you guys are doing ADR. Can you walk me through the ADR process? Because is this done uh, while <laughs> you're shooting? I'm not listening to it, okay? <sighs> but I would have to <sighs> – your whole body. I now, I don't know what's going on, but even the breathing of <sighs> – you know, when, when a ranger moves and they're not putting in the emphasis of, like, theater – it, it doesn't become, you have nothing to feed off. So that's why it's like, nah, whoa, hey, over there. You'd have to, nah. every little body thing you did was just ADR, every movement that they did. So if they didn't have a movement and they said, there, we still have to go ah, over there. But that's why, right ah, over there. So it was a lot of ADR. And uh, my brother had to do ADR too, even for some of his lines, because uh, his lines were very uh, soft spoken. And that the episode where you see right now where he was on the horse, man, he was sweaty. He couldn't hit his mark. And I kept coming up to him going, 
hey, so is acting easy? Oh, man, act distressed me out right now. So he was very stressed to get in front of that camera. And uh, because I'm watching subtitles, when he says, you're my brother, this is the episode where he says, you're my brother? Yes. Because he got off the right or the other episode. I think it might be the episode right before this, actually. 18. Or this one. I'm not so, sure. Yeah, 18. So when he said, yeah, he said, you, you're, my, you're my brother. And they said, cut. And there was like, oh, man, what do, okay. You know, you're my brother. Cut. <clears throat> you're my one or two. And say, hey, just talk normal like this. Watch action. Just continue talking like this. Watch. Cut. You know, and he was just hit my, you're my brother. That total, uh, you know, total Hollywood look. And I loved it because I was like, oh, it's not that easy, is it? And he was very nervous. And uh, so it was, uh, it was an awakening for him to be like, admit, this is hard. <laughs> this is harder than you think, you know? And so actors do. You Right now, it's like, I want to be an actor. Okay, we're on phone, me and you. But now yes. add a crew of 100 people. So right. to be yourself, you got people watching. You got people behind the scenes. Are, and then you got my brother behind the scene. Now you know, with, doing this stuff. With the, uh, with the ADR, though, if you had to give anybody advice that was auditioning for Power Rangers, what bit of advice would you give them for the ADR? Because you guys do a ton of this i think you probably doing it right now yeah i'm watching the boxing now yes here's the thing get the worst thing that i did not like about power rangers before i came on are the key eyes it's a, called a key eye a key eye means it's like a it's like a warrior shout it's tightening up your stomach so i did not like when people go key eye there's a line that says key eye key eye it's so annoying <laughs> like on any movie Anything I ever watched, so annoying. So go back to the beginning before Tommy came. Every character, including the Red Ranger, every character, the key eyes have changed and shift because, number one, comes from the bottom of your stomach. So the advice in karate is learn to have not just key eye, key eye. Learn from A to Z. You got all these different key eyes. So if I tighten up and I go, <clears throat> or, you know, you got to keep it tight and interesting versus, yeah, yeah, yeah. So every time I see that as a karate person, I'm like, Lord, when they put the word ki, I hope they just don't go ki. So advice as, as a voice actor, stay on the microphone. <clears throat> don't wear chains. Yeah. Don't uh, take your turn and turn your turn away that yeah, you got to go down. Oh, no, not now. <clears throat> you know, and, 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 and watch the body movements. That's why when I did Transformers Emissary, there was no play. I saw no picture. Oh, wow. So it, was, I, it was like, all right, you know, I did Emissary to nothing. I'm used to this. I'm used to the deep, deep, deep. You do a line. Right. We Bear Bears, the whole episode was open mic. It was you read line after line after line after line. So I got really intimidated, like, ugh, you know, and, and um, I'm watching this boxing. It's not bad. Of course, it's Japanese footage, so... You got to have some good stuff over there. But um, just the, you know, delay the key guys, which right now I'm on mute, which I'm not listening to it. But, uh, you know, if I was doing the key eyes, you have to just exaggerate. You know, even every movement you do. So advice, keep on the microphone, get into it. You know, when the key eye, instead of key eye, hit, ah, hit, ha, it's like deep. All right. Let's do this stuff. Yeah. So you're in battle. You're in battle. You know, it's like Power Rangers aren't supposed to get tired. It's kind of like, I think it's kind of cool. Sometimes I do it more and they're like, hey, tone back on being tired. And I'll be like, okay. And they're like, we don't get tired. I'm like, okay. So uh, it was one of those things where, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, putting, putting your energy into it. Now, when my brother worked with these guys, it was the same thing. My brother right. was behind the scene. Everybody knew him. Everybody liked him. And it's like, oh, now here comes your brother introduced as a character just like Richie was introduced into the Ernie Juice Bar. That's right. Richie was Richie was strategically placed there in red to replace Steve Cardenas if anything went wrong. And he knew it and everybody knew it. That's why Richie that's why Richie was there. About this. Now correct me if I'm wrong, uh and this is kind of a deep dive here. So I heard that like when when the original three, Austin Tweet and uh Walter decided to leave originally it was only going to be Austin and Walter that were going to leave or I know that six of you were talking about it but it was only going to be them two and then Twee flipped at the last minute 
And in the show, they had Richie and uh, Curtis Walters, or uh, Zach's cousin, that they were possibly uh, sliding in there just in case. Right, that's what the season, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Richie was with the Austin or Richie was with Austin? Steve? Yeah, it was Austin. Austin. Richie was with Austin then. Yeah, so they, they planted people in there. Yeah. God, it's been such a long time ago. Uh, and which is, that's not my brother, by the way, pulling them up. So oh, that wasn't double. your brother. That was No, now it is. They had a stunt double off the cliff. He's like, let me do it. They're like, no. So they put like a Japanese stunt double in there. Um, but uh, but yeah, it was Richie and it was, I, I don't know about Tweet, but I do know, <laughs> I see his face now and I I just look and he's so nervous, man. And every time he did, he, you know, and I had a special Tommy voice. I had that, hey guys, you know, it's it's cool. It's uh, one of those things. So my brother seeing him like this is just uh, never. Uh... Wait, he says I'm your brother here, no? Yeah, he does actually. This is it. Yeah, he does say he's your brother here. Yeah, because I remember, I remember this when I was little. Yeah, how worried he was. He couldn't get his lines down. Jason, who told you to wear your pants that high? I don't know. I think it was just the style. But. Um, <laughs> He was so nervous on this one. But, yeah, it was – I guess – I don't know what happened, but we were very strong. Me, Dave, and Amy were saying no. David Trueheart. I'm your brother. Brother. There it <laughs> is. That's the part where he was like, I'm your – finally he got it down. He's like, I'm your brother. It's like question mark or a statement over and over. And cut, I'm your brother. No, no. No, again. So, finally, we got, we got a good one. But, um, but yeah, I'm not too sure about uh, – you know, I'm not too sure about uh, – that was a good one, too. That was a good episode. Oh, we'll watch the bloopers, though. Oh, I love these. I love watching these credits. So you actually have to hit watch credits, but these are so oh, good. Ah, darn. So I'm watching oh. them right now. I'm watching them right now. There's, there's, these are great. I love that they put these at the end. of. So would you ever watch these back and just, just for the bloopers? Because these are so funny. Dude, the bloopers were funny. They just cut all the bloopers out. I don't know. There was one season where they just no longer put bloopers in there. So yeah. it was like – it was strange, but – but uh, as far as the other guys, I'm not too sure. I just know me, Dave, and Amy were pretty strong on not leaving. And for whatever happened, that happened. Fast forward, I don't know how many years, I'm celebrating with my agency at a restaurant downtown. Uh, and it's just an example of you being actors when my brother decided to leave as well for money. And honest, went downtown, ate at a sushi restaurant, and it was Twee as my waitress. No way. Yes. And I remember ordering, hey, we'll take this and that. And I remember her voice. Hey, and I said, oh, I remember thinking, well, there goes my dinner because I am not asking for drinks, waters. I feel like not asking her for anything. She sat down. What are you doing? And then I think uh, there was one time she worked on the crow where she did the crow or yeah, whatever it was. Right. My memory, I don't know if it was before and after, but she was my waitress. And I was thinking at that time, I'd much rather stay on the show. I'd just much rather be on a TV show than being a waitress. But they do say when you say, hey, I'm an actor in Hollywood, they say, which restaurant do you work at? Right. And Fock worked at a restaurant too. And I almost probably met him before he became a ranger. So he hustles. So when I hear these stories, I worked at a restaurant and was a bus boy when I was 13. So it was standard, you know, it's a standard, standard thing. You could talk to Fock more about it, but, uh, but yeah, man, it was super crazy. And I just, the, the whole time I, those things made me, well, I had karate schools at the time, but those things kept me, I guess connected thinking, what would I rather do? Would I rather, you know, survive and live, which I had a great, great life, good living, made a lot of money. It wasn't nothing to do with money. Of course it's not union, like I said, but I've made millions at what I do because this is something I was passionate. I was only hired for a couple episodes. So to make Zio was like, Oh, another season. And we never thought about, Oh, let's wait till we get picked up. Let's wait. Oh, we got picked up. We have a job. We never thought, I never thought about that. I just do Power Rangers go forever. I, I really did. I never thought if we're going to get picked up, I knew we we're going to get picked up. It's just, you know, when my brother played this, this role, uh, you know, he, he was very similar and growing up, uh, you know, he was two years older. And of course I was the little brother and, and, you know, he would like, you know, date people and see people. And he was, he was the, he was the man of Tommy. He was the Tommy man. I was the Tommy boy. You know, as a younger brother, and uh, that kind of that kind of stank. But we were we were pretty tight. He was a good martial artist. We uh, we fought a lot. We did earn the name Fairless Frank Brothers because anytime you're in karate, you earn your name by going to the gym. And when Dino Thunder, I went to Dino Thunder. I went to a boxing gym, David Tuha, and Shogun was my boxing coach. And I'd go there fight all the time. And he kept saying, "Man, the muff, the muff, the muff, the muff." And I was like, 
my nickname. They come on, Muff, get in there, and like the whole time because they talk different over there. And I finally, a month later, I said, "Look, man, I need to know my name over here at the gym. Are you calling me a Muff for for what reason? And what does that even mean? You know right. what I mean?" He goes, "Must." I said, "The Muff, the Must." And I said, "What does the Must mean?" He goes, "Go watch uh, once a, once a warrior or whatever the independent movie Jake the Muss." You know, Jake the Muss was a good fighter back then. So he said, the Muss was my nickname back then. So I thought he said the Muff, and I was like, the whole time, it was the Muss. So you earn, you earn your names by, you know, you just earn your names. Like, we hang out, and we'll do something, and, and Joe, your nickname in the gym is, that's your nickname. That's just what it is. So, uh, but uh, looking at him now and looking at me, we would train. I mean, we'd go to Inglewood. My brother would go to the biggest guy in the tournament and say, sit next to him you got a choice and he said well let's just get him out of the way that's how he was he was he was a tough guy even though he looks like a pretty boy me and him grew up on a different grew up together we would train in inglewood we'd go see mr fisher we would fight hard and my brother would just sit to the next biggest guy and go okay i'll, I'll fight him and i was always like lord so i learned a lot from him but seeing him on this role is just the g-rated it's you know we we all had that talk we all we all had that voice, but he uh, learned very quickly that uh, this was uh, it was a different type of different type of show, and uh, being an actor was quite different. Was your brother always into martial arts, just like you were? You know, my brother was a different breed of martial arts. We didn't train uh, that much. The long story short, like in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, the reason why Brazilian Jiu Jitsu rank is so strong, even with Steve, is that Steve's a black belt, and when you're a black belt, you're a black belt around the world. There's no uh, you know, jiu-jitsu, there's no shortcut rank. And my brother trained, but my brother would come in and beat up a lot of black belts, bottom oh, line. Wow. And he was a lower rank. So he beat up a lot of black belts. And one day he came in and was like, I guess I'm a black belt. <laughs> and everyone's like, can you tell your brother? I said, no, you tell him. So my brother, and which rightly deserved back in the days when karate was karate, you, you know, take someone out, then you would wear their belt. And so my brother would train, but that's pretty much how he became a black belt. And he was a good fighter. No one could tell him otherwise. My brother's point was, okay, Joe. So, and I, my point was earn it, respect, live by the codes. My brother was like, okay, Joe, how long you been training? 20 years. Okay, cool. I haven't trained, but if I beat you up, that's pretty much, I can take your rank. Yeah, I guess that's the way it is. Pop, pop, pop. Cool. Joe, can I have your belt? And you're, Joe's thinking, well, I paid how much money for uh, 20 years of training? Here's a guy that came in. I, I wanted to train him to be a fighter is sure. what I wanted to do, train him to be a fighter. He would have been a great fighter. I mean, he's, he's been through a lot in his life. He would have been a really good fighter, um, and uh, he was, though. But, but anyway, he was just a tough guy. And seeing him, how tough he was, I remember two things in my life, watching him comb his little girl's hair. You know, when he was braiding her hair and just tough guy braiding her hair. I remember that. And then I remember him on set. That one specific line, I think we shot out of order. Um, we did. I, so I'm pretty sure we shot that scene first before all this other stuff. Right. Because that's why I kept saying, I, oh, man, I, yeah, I think it's coming because I could see his face. So we would shoot out of order. It's like, okay, let's shoot this scene. You step up, hit the mark and say, you're my brother. And that's where that all began, where he shifted and thought this, hey, you actors have me. I mean, we're working hard. You have to be on cue. Sometimes it's easy for people. Other times it's not. So here's a tough guy hitting the mark and uh, staying in line. And I'll tell you, being an actor is not that easy because all of a sudden, you know, you, you're, you start training here, the right. advice for people. Start here and even voice actors because you start loud and it's acceptable for rangers. If you stop, start here, ADR, Tony Oliver, and say, redo it. Give me more energy. So go big. Most likely they'll keep it. Go big and maybe your performance will be nervous and you'll be here and they'll keep it. So never start your training here. Always aim big. Even exaggerate your karate moves, you know, because when you do it on the street, it might be like this. It's not going to be like that. So over-exaggerate uh, what I mean by over-train. Get yourself prepared. You know, when you're going in a fight, you better plan that you're fighting the toughest guy. Don't underestimate, overestimate. Just fight him like you would fight. A person is a boxer so go into it not underestimating now i know that one of your uh, closest friends on the show was david yost he was uh stepping yeah. back from actually being in the suit at this time uh what was his what was everybody's opinion on that was david just kind of ready to be the man in the chair that's kind of uh you know not have to be in the you know same spotlight with everybody else because i know that or was it a decision that he was completely cool with well 
I want to back it up real quick to Richie. Now I think about it. So you're saying Richie was with Austin. You yep. put Richie there. Richie was supposed to be the Red Ranger. Mm -hmm. uh, but something happened with Richie, and then they casted, and Steve came in. And if I'm not mistaken, Richie represent well he was I, i'm not too sure what ethnic but i think he was hispanic a little right. bit when he came into it right. so they wanted that little bit of an aspect so i think he was there i don't know what went on with him or behind the scenes or anything like that but he was gone and then they casted the other three so that's right so when i say steve steve sorry about that um now as far as david yost coming back from the show um i, I will say this I, I never spoke on this before and I never thought about it from Dave's perspective because people say, hey, he had trouble with producers and directors and them saying stuff about, you know, what's going on with them. I never thought because, see, I'm on the other side. And I thought, well, no one really knows Power Rangers. The crew didn't know. So maybe he had issues with the producers. I know he had a few issues with producers. Maybe he was a little bit more closer to producers. Maybe producers know more than I thought they knew. But uh, there was a point where it was like, okay, you're going to work in the command center. And I remember David wanting to stay as a ranger, but then I remember them coming to some kind of conclusion and that's a Dave Yost thing, but I was always friends with Dave. And uh, I think at one point there was some way back then, like, Hey, I'm having trouble. And my thing as a friend was, okay, Dave, whatever, let's film, you know, Hey, there's some issues. Okay, cool. Let's get in the command center. So maybe I didn't really think to take the time to ask what are your concerns and what really went on behind right. the scenes. Because when I see that, I think, you know, in Walter's perspective, Austin's perspective, Twee's per perspective at that time when I started working at a restaurant was the wrong decision. But I think their per perspective is different, thinking, well, I was going to try to better the show. I need to do union. Totally get it. But my perspective was different on my side. So I think everyone, to defend everyone, I think everyone has their own reasons why they do what they did. But for me, I was just happy what I did. And I remember me, Dave, and Amy talked. We didn't want to go on the other side because we knew right then and there what my brother pulled was, yeah, I kind of want a little more money. Bam, you're done. No gold I mean, ranger. Another thing, too, is I think a lot of people got to take into consideration is that we're talking about kids that are in their early 20s to, to late teens. Yeah. You know, pretty lifelong decisions that I – look, to, I'll be the first to tell you, when I was 19, 20, 21, I was not making the best decisions. I was going and doing yeah. the dumbest things possible. So – I know exactly that your mindset changes in 20 years. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's completely different. So, I, I mean, I, I think that's, a, that's one of those things. Yeah. But I always knew that you and David had a close friendship. I always saw you guys at panels and stuff like that. And it's yeah. a shame what happened to him on the show. But I'm, I'm so happy that, that, you guys are, that you guys are all, you know, you and him are very close now. So Dude, we're close then too. We though. still are. And you know what's, what I love and respect about David? Probably David's the only one that – you could do a show. He's not, he's there to help you. Like his last text was, Hey man, I'm always here to hear if you need anything. It's not uh, hook me up with the show. And I'm not yeah. saying, but like, I love fun. I let everyone I hook up with I actually love. It's like one of the points where I will do a show with anyone originals. I'll do a show for the fans because remember, it's not about us in our, in our, in our head or our egos. It's about them. So sometimes we got to all be angel Grove and step up and say, Hey, Joe, you're going to like this reunion Zoom, or you're going to like this Power Morphicon reunion. I just think there's a lot of politics in, in life, and, and especially in the Power Ranger thing. There's some people that embrace it. I don't know, the, the Yellow Ranger I worked with on, on Dial of Thunder, you know, Emma, she, uh, I don't know if she embraces or she doesn't. I just want to see one big happy reunion, regardless of all we how, how we feel. And uh, so but my point is I can, you know, it's never about business with Dave. That's what I love. I could be on a right. show and he's like, hey, post me. Hey, post me. Hey, you didn't do this. Like, I will be at a show and we don't post each other because we're talking not for any other reason. Is I love helping Dave. Dave helps me. But it's not about financial help and financial decisions. It's about personal help and decisions. He's really close to Amy Joe Johnson. I mean, you know, you see him out there and he's really willing to help me. And most fact, fun facts people don't know is that my brother lived with Dave for a month. Oh, my, brother needed a, my brother needed a place to stay. Uh, he had some issues back in the days. He needed a place to stay. Uh, that's when he quit the show, and that's when I got on the show because, you know, it was a point where he didn't have a job, and Dave was the first one to say, hey, I'll take care of your brother. So my brother lived with Dave in, in his really beautiful house in West Hollywood Hills. Uh, he lived with Dave. <laughs> you know, my brother would use his car and uh, all this other <laughs> stuff, and 
they would constantly hate. Your brother took my Mercedes. And I'm like, Dave, uh, let me talk to my brother. So, yeah, my, Dave was the first one to help him step up and say, let your brother stay with me. He had a beautiful house. And here's an actor who, you know, says, hey, you guys aren't making money. He had one of the nicest house in West Hollywood Hills in, in, in Hollywood. It was a beautiful house. I would stay there. Uh, and Dave, if you're watching, I loved your towels. I know it's super <laughs> random. I would stay at his house. He always had, like, really just – things you go in the bathroom and you got towels and washcloths i know that doesn't sound much but you have to understand i grew up like in you know like a trailer you know like a mobile home with no carpet uh, you know on five acres so going to dave's house was like beautiful mansion you know and uh and then that's when one time i was working and i realized i don't know what i'm renting an apartment for i got enough money to buy a house in cash like what am i thinking i'm thinking like like i'm young we're young and we make decisions so i looked and my bank said i want to buy a house Bought a house in Valencia at that time it was about two hundred fifty thousand. Those houses go for probably eight hundred, nine hundred now. Two hundred fifty thousand, nice little single one story, and it was uh, the rest was history. So what I'm saying is, I didn't think about how much money's in my bank. I was living life until I said, I need to do something. Like I need to buy a house. I actually had an accountant at the time to handle money. I hired an accountant. I didn't need an accountant at the time. I was young and a financial advisor. So when you look at that. How is that living off like no money right, right, for right. us, us. Now, other rangers coming in, I will tell you, they got a pay cut like you would not believe. Those guys may be getting 10% of what I was getting. Jeez. So it was unfair, but I didn't want to feel like that golden boy. I didn't want to feel like that, so I never asked money. So that's why I went into Turbo, like, you'll pay me more money? Go help these people. You know what I mean? Like, make it a little bit even. So – we never, we, me, Dave, and Amy had something called Favorite Nation. Yeah, I know so, about Favorite Nations. You can explain it though. It's when somebody else comes in, they gotta, they gotta, if they come in with more money, they, get, they have to give you, they have to at yeah. least match it, right? Yeah. So when I went to Dino Thunder, one of my conditions for Dino Thunder is Favorite Nation. Don't give me more than you're giving the actors. And it was low. It was low. And not a lot of people do that. It's like to the point where I didn't want to go in. I went in still like, oh, my God, it's Jason David Frank. But I went in saying, Joe, I'll do what you do. I'm working for what you do. So there's no excuse for you not to work as hard as me because I'm getting the pain same, same as you. So Favorite Nation, there was no such thing back then. But there was. So me, Dave, and Amy, when everyone left, we got Favorite Nation. So I was the one to go in and say, hey, you know, we're doing this movie in Australia. Fox, our contract's up. We're done. Like, oh, well, you know, we need to work overtime. Okay, well, then y'all need to do something about it. And so Dave, Amy would always do something. I did, I had, uh, I did a first mall appearance and it was Santa Claus. I beat out Santa Claus and I went to this mall. And you know, they paid me a lot of money back then. For me, it was a lot of appearances were like five grand. And I said, okay, cool. I didn't really like doing that. But Savon came up and said, hey, we don't want you out there. We don't want you doing appearances at all. And I said, oh. I didn't like him. I said, well, I love him. I don't know what to tell you. He says, well, we don't want you doing it. So I said, okay. So they paid us like 10 grand a month just not to do appearances. That's just through hiatus. Like that's just one little thing that I got. So I got it. Dave got it. Amy got it. So it was one of those things where I think they knew I did pretty good stuff uh, negotiating, but I, I didn't have to negotiate because I went in with the win-win. Like, Joe, I like doing appearances. We can't do them. Well, I like them. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> well, you know, so there's a lot of loopholes. So when I went back to Dino Thunder, whew, those contracts now are all loopholes because me, Dave, and Amy, there was so many loopholes. I got residuals of the karate video, the Green Ranger karate video, right. and the Red Ranger karate video. Now, the, the, the Green Ranger karate video, I got a residuals. It was pretty high points. I never saw any money. Never saw any money. They just said, well, we went on tour. Here's the spreadsheet. Never saw no money. That's fine. I still did it. I wrote it all. I wrote the red rain, the, the red, uh, the red, I was, the uh, I did the red ranger video. I think I was the white ranger. I was a white ranger and I wore a red gi. So I did the white oh, ranger yes, video. I, do remember. I have that video actually. Yes. Well, see, I own a portion of that video sales, but what happened was Heim got upset at me and he said, look, I'm going to pull all the videos off the shelf. And I'd rather have you not make no cut of my sales Jeez. and I'll pull it off. So he pulled it off. So therefore, there goes my royalty. So I had royalties on those two, but I never audited them. I never said anything. Sure. I was just working. Was I, was I young and dumb? No, because I had karate schools. I figured if I can 
reach through the screen and show you the passion of me winning a tournament, then you guys would sign up at a local school, not mine, but a local school. Again, I had businesses and I've done always well, you know, even during quarantine right now and all that stuff, my California school shut down. We're still doing it through a computer. We were the number one kid show in the world from the computer. But I will say this, that if I've ever said anything, and I'm saying it as a man, if I've ever said anything to offend anybody who says, well, that's not true. Maybe it's not, but from my perspective, it was. Sure. So I think each, everyone has a different story and a different perspective. But overall, you wrap it up and you say, hey, I know Joe the way I know Joe. Joe's always helped me. You've always been there for me. You know, as a friend, I, I share poetry with you. Poetry, I, I won't share with anybody. No joke, same thing. Like, I, I tell that to people all the time is that it's crazy. And I tell you this all the time. Yeah. It's crazy for me to know that, like, my childhood idol, who has now become a really good friend of mine, is just one text away. Because you, hey, and you know this for a fact, there's been times where I've been kind of down too. It's like, yo, man, I need to, you need to hit me with one of your uh, spoken words because yeah. at that moment, it'll, it'll, it'll like connect. And I'm like, yep, that's what I needed. Yeah. And it's amazing. It's amazing to have that. And as a true person, as a true human being, it's one of those things where I've never told you, Joe, not to like anyone. I've never said, please don't like that Ranger. Please don't like this Ranger. Please don't like this universe. Please don't like Marvel. Please don't. And that's what you need to have is that you need to decide with yourself, anyone from any universe, Power Rangers, DC, Marvel, actors, you, you do it all. You have to decide yourself. If this is, you know, your own personal relationship, but this is a show and and I encourage everyone to like every Ranger, every season from your perspective, it's just, you know, there's different things that I think, but that's how I feel that that the industry should never be, never be slammed by people. People have their own opinions and own this and own that. And I just say, let you be the judge of the relationship between me and you, because I certainly if someone's calling saying, hey, I want to do this interview, I want to do this interview, I might say, well, I, Joe's a friend of mine, so let me give it to Joe. And that's yeah, just no, the man, way I is. appreciate that, you taking the time out, man, because honestly, anything I've ever asked you, you've been there, so thank you so much. Um, one thank last you. question, because I know yeah. you have to go. Uh, you've been on a few iterations of Power Ranger teams with different cast members, with Austin, Twee, Walter, David, and uh, Amy Joe, then Steve, Johnny, and Karen, and then Nakia, and Austin was back. Uh, and, and even with your, your uh, turbo cast with Blake Foster and Catherine and, uh, and all the way to, to Dino Thunder with, uh, with Emma and James and, uh, and uh, Ethan. It was, what was Ethan's yeah. name? Uh, Kevin, yeah. Kevin. Um, yeah. And, and Jeff. So out of all those casts, which one do you think uh, gelled the best together just in com- camaraderie? And, and let me say this as, as, as just not to offend anyone but just as an open, not to let no eagles get in, not to let, uh, you know, uh, friends down, because I always get this question all the time. And uh, I'm just being sincere and honest like, as a fan. I really, and maybe it's because my first, but the MMPR in the very first season hit me hard. And because I like everyone's characters, and my instructor always taught me to respect the rank. You don't have to respect the person, but you must respect the rank. So I respect that who... David was as a character. I respect Amy. I respect Walter. I respect Austin. I respect the Tweet. And, and me coming in, we all had different personalities. It was a soap opera evolving. Now, when the other guys came in, I liked them. But for me, there was no nothing like the original. And uh, as much as I can, I can go with my friends and, and say this and make everyone feel good, I love everybody. But as an overall brand, selling the brand and keeping the brand going, um, you know, there's nothing like the originals, and that's just my honest truth. I mean, I think uh, I think a lot of Hasbro executives would uh, agree with you there. Um, but Jason, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Uh, oh, I wanted to ask and let everybody know. Uh, talk to me about the PPP because for people that don't know, and also your social media stuff because you're killing it over there on social media. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm got my Legend of the White Dragon that's going, and and you've always been a big fan of that too. I, I can't thank you wait for that. I certainly hope you're shooting out here in LA. We are. Good, because I, I, I want to do some set visit, bro. Come down, do some set visit as a friend, set visit as an interviewer. We oh. got, we got, we're totally doing it 100%, which is great. Um, so during this time, the, and you covered it, the PPP, 
as a business loan, as, as a business, you know, you get a PPP and a grant, it covers your payroll, it keeps everyone working. Uh, so I figured, well, hey, I love comics. I, I'm a big fan. I love human interaction. Let me come up with this PPP program that's called Power Ranger Protection Program. And let me take care of the small mom and pops comic books. And let me take care of, of, of comic books just in general, regardless of the size of the books. So I was thinking, this is cool. Joe, just say, Joe, uh, Joe owns a comic shop. He gets a random call from my assistant, Nicole. Hey, Joe, uh, you know Jay State Frank? Yeah, I know Jay State Frank. Cool. He wants to do a fundraiser. Uh, he wants to raise money for your school. It's not going to cost you nothing. He just wants to come in and sign autographs Saturday, and he's going to take a big portion of the proceeds and give it back to you. He's also going to leave you with about 50 to 100 signed items that you could sell later just to help you keep the doors open and just give you a little blessing. People are like, this is a joke, right? Like there's just no, yeah, we know him, but this is a joke. No, it's not a joke. So we rolled in and we've been raising like, uh, the last show raised over $2,000 for the comic shop. And uh, one comic shop was buying a new ceiling, buying new chairs, uh, you know? So it's one of those things where I will not have a comic shop call me and say, hey, I'm gonna book you. There's a lot of bookings going on, but I need to follow my safety guidelines. It's un unbeatable, dude. The, the McAllen Show, Ramsey helped me a little bit with this app that you register through an app and you will get a text, hey, Joe, you're up. And you come up, you get the ticket, you do whatever you want and you leave. So people get to wait in the parking lot. And uh, right now, even at CollectiveCon did a good job on social distancing. But I just want to be really careful at that. But I just want to help and send a blessing. I don't care. I, I, I told Nicole, it doesn't matter. I want to get on the road. I want to be safe. I want human interaction. I want people to go, oh, my God, even if it's six foot away wearing a mask, it's Tommy and I, Joe. Thank you. You can feel my energy. You can feel the love. And so I'm just traveling around. We have quite a few shows. We're, uh, I think, going to Corpus, and we got San Antonio, and we got Austin, and, uh, you know, we got Waco. We got a lot of places here in Texas. We'll be coming, you know, to uh, working it out into Los Angeles and different places. And Font, he's doing his stuff, and we're all tying it into the Legend of the White Dragon tour. So Ooh, uh, people fun. get a chance to meet. But it has to follow my guidelines. And I'm really strict on branding. The PPP, uh, I tell everyone, anyone wants to be a part of it, I want nothing. The PPP, even if you're not a ranger, has a curriculum, a safety curriculum yeah. that you must follow and have a guideline. If you want to do your own, then do E, 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 C, W, whatever it is. And you also have to donate some of your money. So are you okay with coming for free? Are you okay with donating some of your money? And are you okay with signing 50 to 100 items left behind? If you say no, then most probably not part of the PPP. So you down with PPP? Yeah, you know me. I know you, man. I'm trying to get you out here to Manhattan Beach. I think I know. You told me, uh, 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 like, you were so excited talking to me about it, about how well it went. And as soon as you explained it to me, I was like, oh. And you started sending me pictures. Like, this is genius. This is such yep. a smart way yep. to keep everybody safe but still – give you that feel of meeting the person that you want to meet. It was so cool because even when you were like, oh, people are, you know, they get to wait in their cars or safe distance. And it, once you explained it, I was like, oh, this is brilliant. This is so smart. Like, I can't believe nobody's doing this. It's so smart. We did it. I know. Well, I mean, we like to be the first of everything. I'm really a big, big fan of being the first, you know, playing the first bloodshot, playing the first emissary, being the first karate school that was high tech back then, being the first of stuff, you know, and, and when other people duplicate it, it's, it's, it's a compliment. But I do got to tell you, a lot of big promoters, big, I was worried about not doing shows next year because a lot of them said, don't do it. Right, right. Don't right. do it. Don't do it. They were afraid we're going to give them a bad name. And because I did this. I got called by every top promoter saying, good job. You're bringing hope to the Comic-Con industry. Here's a comic book shop my friend is in need of. And um, it's, it's amazing. Once California opens up a little bit, I like to come down there. Uh, you know, And because of my school, sure. I want to see my students there too. So I want it to be, you know, once we're not shut down, to go in there and do that and to see my school. I kind of feel bad going to a place uh, that when my karate school shut down. So I want to be able to, once we open, which... God knows what's happening in California. My partner said they might have something going on Friday to make the announcement. But I tell you, Joe, we're super safe. And that human connection mentally I need, it's, it's about me too. It's not about them. It's about me. Like I mentally need that. I can only imagine you must be a tiger in his cage right now. You're always out and about. Yep, I know, dude. I am. And so I've been riding a bike a lot. I've been doing a lot of onlines. Uh, and like I said, dude, when I talk to you, man, it's the, it's the, it's this poetry 
stuff that I have that I know for a fact most of almost every every poem in this book almost every poem in this book I was writing a book but I'm a little still still Larry on it but every poem in here you know yeah because it says it to you and that's friendship because you never judge me see I'm your hero and so sending a poem about being lost and lost and found and all this it's it's crossing my fingers going I hope you can look past this ranger stuff and you do oh yeah because- man. I think we're both I think at a point now where it like the the fandom side of it was was great but now it's kind of like just you're just Jason my friend so it's yeah. like yeah like sending me that stuff too was is super uplifting because some of those times man I'm in I was in a place and it was just like I needed to hear yeah. that man that's what I needed the me same- too I needed you to reconfirm that I needed you to reconfirm too to say JDF that's what I needed man and I'm like okay so that's what I need too so I guess it's okay. All right, here's this. And that's why in my head, the film, dude, I won like best actor. I got all this stuff and I'm supposed to go to all these festivals, get accepted for awards. And then, you know, it's shut down. So I'm still waiting for that. You know, I went to Omniboat, you know, went out there that, that didn't do so good, but I got the experience of Sundance. And let me tell you why I went there. I got almost every business card that I sent in my head and they love it. So it was a reason why I went there. It wasn't for Omniboat. It was for my own short. Sure. So, you know, going there and going, wow, what am I here for? Reasons, it's, things happen for every reason. If we weren't locked down, we weren't quarantined, you didn't start a show, something we said right now could change one person's life. It really could. It could, it could encourage them to do what you're doing. I've seen your interviews. I think you're great. And that's why it, it's, it's good to have Business is business and personal is personable and a person is person. And me, Dave Yost, could do both and right. never have business get in the way, ever, ever get business in the way. Not jealous of a Comic-Con and you're doing this and you're doing that and you're selling that, nothing. The personal relationship is all, all the heart in it. And that's what Dave is. He's got all the heart. He's got all the heart and, and you too are personal. Now, if other people come and say, I don't want to talk about this guy, that guy, let them talk about whatever because you're the interviewer. They got to hear, you got to hear their story. You got to hear their side. It would be ignorant and ego to say, well, this is the side I know, even though we know people, but still everyone has a story that we might not know what they're going through. And, so, and you know, and, and so it's great to see you out there. Thank What's you. That? And, and, and uh, one last thing for sure. If people wanted to sign up to get lessons from, from your karate schools, where would they be able to do that at? Um, well, it's super cool. I'm going to tell you, I started a program way ahead of the curve called trainmejdf.com and this was our celebrating our fifth year not because we went in quarantine people are like hey i got this idea maybe we could do a personal training through line i'm like guys i was doing that five years ago and i got awesome all right sorry sorry what were you saying that's okay so um when i started this it was an experiment eight years ago to see if i could teach skype lessons okay skype lessons so I started this, okay, let's do Skype lessons. I had four students sign up. It was an experiment. It wasn't about money. I was like, okay, Joe, I'd have to turn this way. Take your right hand, throw a straight punch. Take your right, let me see Joe, follow me. So I had this kid. Yeah, that's true. Well, it's good. I had this kid that would sit there and just do this. And then the, the, it would start. So I thought, man, there was a delay. I don't know why he was there. And he just, he didn't look really excited about it, but he did really, really good. Four classes later, his mom called and said, hey, I just want to let you know my son absolutely loved your classes. Great. You know, I'm going to teach him. I love him. I'll always do private lessons. And he took his life. And he took his life. And his mom called and said, hey, can we bury him in Power Ranger stuff? And, you know, all this other stuff he looked for. He loved you. And I said, absolutely. And I'll say his name, just not not say his name out of respect. But, dude. The mom, I said, you know, I said, listen, I didn't know your son was going through anything. I, I didn't know. And I said, he looked really like bored when he came in. So I, I was trying to pump him up. But the reason why he was like this is because she said he ran down into the basement like 20 minutes before my class and sat there and waited for that link button to come up. And when he hit that link button, there was a bit of a delay. So when I would see him, he would be like this and go, hey, and he did really good. Now, if I knew at that time, she said that was the only thing he looked forward to. I could have probably said something a little different if I had my JDF spoken truth. I could have said, hey, how are you feeling mentally? How are you feeling health-wise? And, you know, I'm not saying I could have helped him, but I realized at that point how important that class was to him. That's why I started the training. 
It could, dude, I, Power Rangers, not just me, Power Rangers saves lives before. It saves lives. So you can just go to trainmejdf.com. It's a good place to start. You will not get a black belt. Uh, I'm not a McDojo. You know, McDojos are, if you ever paid for a testing rank, which 99% of the people have, I don't. I don't charge testing fees at my school. And it's going to take you six to seven years to reach the level of black belt. So I have a very limited handful of black belts. That's not a McDojo black belt. Uh, it's not a McDojo school. So you can't become a black belt, but it can introduce you and mentally keep you sharp. Uh, and so I do these Zoom things once in a while. I'll go on uh, training me too, and I'll do some free live stuff to train. I just love it, man. It, Joe, it just gets me out of my head. It, it uh, You know, I got my house here. I built this cool little office behind me. My other uh, part of the re reconstruction of my house is a wreck. Uh, you know, and, and life is a perception. It is, uh, it is what you see. So when I get off the phone, I'm going to show you what's on the other side of my set so you can see, hey, life is not always like this, but life can always be different. Sure. You know what I mean? And, um, and I'll show you now because I want people to know that this could be perception and this could be reality. Right. So, right? This, is, this could be reality. The light sets, the this, the that. So, but people don't talk about this spoken truth feelings. They just want this. Sure. And life sometimes is not always this. But that's it's what you not. see. So the other side of the camera is what I talk about on the JDF spoken truth on my Instagram. It's, I can go there and I can feel free to speak. Not just, I don't talk about politics, but I can feel how I feel. Tell me how you feel about stuff. And for me, I just get protected because it's a spoken truth page. Right. You know what I mean? So I absolutely always embraced who I was. I was the first ranger ever going to comic cons. I'm still that ranger. If you can go look at my, my page, I got people saying left and right, dude, I came to say hi and you signed two comic books for me. What the heck, man? I'm like JDF. I didn't expect that. I even asked what's in the bag. I will. You come up. What's in your bag, Joe? Uh, I got a couple of comics. What comics you got? Let me see it. Yes, sir. Sign it for you. Free? Yeah, do it. Here. You're yeah. a part of the PPP program. And your lines are always massive, and you wait, and you, you'll sit there the whole time and, and meet every single person. I've seen it with my yeah. own eyes in New York, at Morphicon, San Diego. I've seen it happen. Yeah. It's crazy. And you know what's crazy, Joe? And I know we'll go, and you can edit this, but Ramsey, who does South Texas Comic Con, he has his people working at Kaboom Shops, and he's got a Kaboom comic shop. He's got a Kaboom anime shop. And then he's got a Kaboom video game shop that sells comics. So every shop is themed out. He's got one of the best anime shops over there. Dude, it's incredible. Like I walked in and beautiful studio. He's, he's a singer. He's got like a 41, I think it's a 40 caliber, 40 caliber kiss. And he's the singer of that. I don't think people know Ramsey, the owner of South Texas Comic Con is the singer. Listen to it. 40 caliber kiss. But this is what he told me. Right now, he just texted me. He said, man, I got about 10 people that missed it. I said, well, I can send them free autographs. I'm like, no, bro, it's not about autographs. They want that experience. You know what I mean? And uh, he said the store got swamped in calls. And he said that 80 or 70% uh, of the people that came to this con has already met me. And they just want to keep coming back. Because when I go back to their town, it's about relationships. It's not about one experience. And that's why my lines, that's why promoters are like, ah, no, no, he'll never sell in this area. It's like. Most of the people that met me are going to come back. And it's not about spending money. It's about relationship, taking pictures, going, Joe, what's going on? So you build relationships with these people. And that's why Legend of the White Dragon took off is because we're building relationships. And, they're, oh, and you're part of it. You're part I can't of it, wait for I, Legend of the White Dragon, Jason. Honestly, like I've been looking forward to this for a while. Every single time you announce uh, more of the cast, I get more excited for it. I just saw that you recently put out some concept art that looks amazing. Dude, it is amazing. And, and, and the perception of me wearing, uh, wearing, wearing these and showing my tattoos. But, dude, the cosplay. I mean, like, the, 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 you've always been a big fan where you said, Jay, do the Legend of the White Dragon. You got to do the Legend of the White Dragon. I said, Yo, I know. I just... I don't know. It's just not the right timing. But the reason for that is too close to Hasbro. We would have got sued. We would have had a cease and desist, man. Like literally Hasbro's already on us. And I'm going to tell you right now, when you see some of the toys, some of the toy stuff coming out and who picked us up on toy rights, you're going to be like, oh, they sell Power Ranger stuff. They sure do. So guess what? Hasbro's going to see that Bat and the Sun logo. Hasbro's going to see something like this, that there's nothing they can do about it. And it's a whole new universe. And Aaron, he's a, 
fan, just like you, man. You know what to ask. You know, you know, a fan of the show. If if I was gonna hire anyone, and I was a big studio, I'd say, Joe, I didn't hire you. Uh, what's your expertise? And you might be like, I don't know. I'll take care of the media and I'll take care of all the props because I know everything about props. Okay, cool. You're hired. They don't you hire know, fans. They hire numbers. Fun fact. I actually, this is actually why I want to talk to David at some point. I actually was a producer on film and television for a long time and I actually did a ton of reality stuff. Uh, same, same, same around the same time David did. So it's yeah. very interesting. We have a lot of the same friends uh, in that circle. That's it's crazy. Fun you fact, thanks. Should get David on there. Has, is is uh, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna text David afterwards and let him know how great this was. Uh, I've interviewed you know, everyone David always one time, and I, I've always wanted to again because he was so nice and welcoming. Dude, um, he's nice. He's yeah. so nice. It was a long. I'll, time I'll call ago. him and let you know because there's a lot of things I think you know we kind of like get tricked into. But see, the, the, there's no trick. I have actors ask telling me this all the time at shows. Like I do, I'm one that does unlimited interviews at Comic Cons. Yeah. And someone came up to me and said, "Hey, uh, how do we know this guy with an iPhone is legit?" And I said, "So it was Lou and a few other people." I said, "How do I know what he's legit?" Interview. I said, "Here's how you do it. You treat it like a CNN news report. You treat it the same." And there's a lot of people that have iPhones that are huge. And I had one guy in New York doing a story on me. I didn't know. He wanted to see if I was really the guy that I said I was. He did a story on me in New York Comic Con years ago. And so if you treat every interview the same, then you'll have, you'll have a great outcome. The thing with that being said, there is a lot of people that are like, hey, me, 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 do this. And then all of a sudden we end up on a content show that I did one interview that ended up almost like on a soft porn channel that I was like <laughs> – with these guys, no, no lie. Like these guys were at a con. I said, guys, I mean, you guys are advertising. I don't know who you are. Like this was kind of bad to put me on that kind of content. Oh, sure. So I'll let Dave know. Dave obviously is a good guy, but I think everyone's coming at everyone. Like, and I will usually do the interviews uh, if I have the time, but if the content's correct, because I don't want to end up on some bad content, controversy things, and all that other stuff. So well, Another thing, too, the one thing I don't want to do, and this, I don't want this to be a misconception for anybody out there. The, the, look, there's a lot of rumors and innuendo that go on about uh, actors outside of Power Rangers. That's not the stuff that I kind of want to talk I yeah. mean, I dwell on, really. I mean, I feel like yeah. a lot of that stuff that may have happened in the past is kind of like in the past. Let's yeah. let it die there. Let's all move on to the future. And, reminisce on a, a great show that's still on it's almost on for 30 yeah. years so i know dude it's that's crazy, crazy. It's crazy. yeah crazy. but you know and it's it's one of those things where i think it's great i mean you know it's q and a's all the time people want to get into stuff people's been there before since so i got all these personal questions i just didn't feel like being personable at the time and you know because i go through a lot i'm like i'd rather talk about the show you know because i want to get away from all this depression that i'm thinking which i didn't tell them so Usually I'm, I'm open with everything, but it's usually those same questions like, hey, you're going to fight punk and what's the beef here and what's the beef? I'll clear the air that there is no beef with anyone. It is. It's if there is, it's their problem, not mine. Like I'm like, you know, let the let the spirit set free. Let let Angel Grove be and let let all the fans enjoy what it is. And if there's problems behind the scenes and I'm not talking about powering every show, every, every show, Shatner. All these guys that do shows, sometimes you might not want to do shows with other people. And everyone's like, just do the Star Trek stuff, man. Like, <laughs> let people live that. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be controversy. We got Dragon Ball Z. You got every universe with actors have actors. But see, if you're an actor and you hold an issue against an actor, you're actually hurting the fan. Because right. the fan don't care about that. The fans care about what we see. So right. if we did a Zoom of the original. We did Zoom of stuff. That's why I love Font so much, too, is that, Fonts become really popular, and the reason why I love him is that he's a good dude, but he also always, always tries, and Steve too, they always try to hook me up with stuff. They want nothing, and if I tell them, nah, I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? They, they, they're, they're actually there. Personally, the business is okay, but they never cross the lines. It's, it, it never crossed the line. So if there's something that, you know. Um, Rising that, tides raise all ships, man. Yep, this is business, personal is personal. And you're all about Power Rangers right now, which is great. And you let the actors steer the conversation. Sometimes actors want to get stuff off their chest. You let them, they get it off their chest, and they go, you know what, Joe? I feel better about that. You know, I don't I, have an issue no more. You know what? It's interesting because I remember back uh, during the – was I think it was Dimensions in Danger. It was like a year before it came out, and I had released a story. And I even remember you the were trying to save the brand. The, there the, 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 the danger with the ninja steel? Yeah, there it is. That's, this is the helmet, bro. 
but I remember uh, like breaking the story about it, and you <laughs> you remember getting you directly contacted me like, hey man, you might want to take it down because uh, at the time Bandai or not Bandai, uh, Saban, you know, it, it, you know, they they didn't release anything yet. And then I remember like some of you guys were like, you know what, just leave. I, I think even you, you're like, just leave it up because at least you guys are giving us promotion. They're like there's yeah. nothing, there's no promotions yeah. coming out at the time. Yeah. So I'm hoping that, you know, I, my whole goal here is to make sure that Power Rangers is seen in the same light as a Marvel and as a DC because yeah. a movie coming out and it has 30 years of lineage and history behind it that shouldn't be ignored. And yeah. thank you so much, man. You are- Dude, thank a, you, man. You always have been great. Um, and I appreciate it. Next time we do this though, we'll do another episode, but I also want to do one of these for Legend of the White Dragon once that's ready. Dude, I would love to, man. I would love to. I think it's great. And, and you know, there's a lot of people that are asking about, um, you know, like, hey, who's in it? And Johnny Bosch, this person, that person, you know, and, uh, and I even know that I think Johnny, when he was helping out, he asked Austin and I was like, you can do whatever you want. So Legend of the White Dragon. And now, you know, everyone's like, they approached me. I turned it down, but I'm so glad and blessed that it worked out the way it worked out it's because whatever reason we changed the universe, it almost had to be that. Johnny was a blessing. All these people that didn't take it, that didn't accept was a blessing. I didn't feel it in my heart on the first Kickstarter. I just didn't feel it because I knew Hasbro would have jumped in and said, Hey, your what character is your name? Uh, Thomas. Uh, so it could be Tommy. No, what, what character is your name in the Legend of the White Dragon? Eric Reed. And what does that have to do with Power Rangers? Right. Well, you're right. You know, so there is no secret about who's doing it, who's turning it down. Everyone has their own stories. And that's why I'm saying let them whatever reason, if Johnny Bosch don't do it, that's, that's on him. I don't want to speak for him. I think he thinks we're speaking for him, but that's his thing. And everyone's that didn't do it is their thing. And for whatever reason, it is what it is. Look, uh, we got content for five seasons. You know, if we went to Netflix, we got content for five seasons. So there are people that are always welcome to this, into this universe on one condition. You don't ask the magic question, how much am I getting paid? Cause yeah. we, we're not hiring you. I mean, it's just what it is. This is a passion project and we got to keep it, you know, we got money, but we got to keep it low. You know, King Batch has nothing to do with the universe, but King's Batch has been more on more Netflix series. Is a, you know, world record on Vine. Some people like his content. Some people don't. Look, he never said that how much are you paying me? He gave us Netflix producers. He's given us all this road of like, hey, I just want to work with JDF and Bat in the Sun. And that's a compliment. Especially well, when right. they're not making anything. I'll tell you right now, if you guys need my help, I'm there for free. Anything, I'll be there day one, every day on set, brother. I'm here Dude, for you. I appreciate you, man. You've always been a big supporter, always pushing it, always changing my mind, going, maybe I should revisit. Yes, revisit, revisit. How? You think, Joe? Yeah, revisit. No, okay. So it was one of those things where we just revisited it. You know, and uh, I was really, when I wrote those poems in December, January, supposed to film a movie with Johnny Bosch, I couldn't. I couldn't, dude. Like, I, I couldn't punch. I'm not, you know, I had my thyroid issues. I was depressed. I was like, oh, my God, what's going on? I physically couldn't do it. So, right. and I told people, if you got a million dollars, if they offered you $100 million in, in December and January to do bloodshot, I would have to decline it because I couldn't move, dude. Like, I could not do the action. My injuries were so bad that mentally I was really screwed up. And now my injuries are doing better. Am I sore this morning? I feel like Font when he says he gets up, he's like, oh, he's got to warm up. Yeah, I am. But I feel good. I can throw a knee. I can throw a kick. I'm ready for the Legend of the White Dragon. I just couldn't film in January. That was the problem. I'm ready for you to, to don that Legend of the White Dragon costume on. So the thing is sick. I can't Dude, wait. Dude, me too. Wait until you see the photographer I just talked today, Adam. Wait until you see what he's got planned. I'm like, dude, as soon as I throw, I got each level. That I'll show you personally, but there's each step of putting the costume together, and we got oh, some really? fittings little by little. Yeah, I'll show them to you. Uh, you'll keep things private, but yeah, you're gonna love it, dude. Well, man, I appreciate you for coming on here. Uh, real quick, where can everybody find? I mean, yeah, I, I know it's uh, no, no. Uh, Instagram is uh, JDFFFN, YouTube JDFFFN, Twitter JDFFFN, and then Jason David Frank official fan page. Most people are wondering what JDFFF means. It's something I took a long time ago. It stands for Jason David Frank, Fearless Frank, and we just put a nation on it. And the reason why we don't say Jason David Frank, Fearless Frank Nation is because way back then, 10 years ago, we had a bunch of people that were fans. So if I would change anything, I would say JDF, FFW, J 
Jason David Frank, Fearless Frank world because I want to build a world of fans. When you want to be an international star, guess what you have to do? You got to fly into those areas that people go, yeah. I never expected you here. Yeah, do those areas. Become an international star. Around the world, there are people that love Power Rangers, but maybe people won't go because they don't get paid enough money. I go everywhere because I want to be an international hero, and that's what I do. That's why I travel around the world. That's honestly why I can't imagine you in the quarantine just being at home. <laughs> that's not for Trust you. Me. Hey, dude, I haven't said any poetry to you because I don't know. Like, I don't know. I haven't wrote in a long time. Like, you know, it's funny. I, I was literally water. like three days ago about to hit you up about it. Be like, yo, you got to send me something. I know. The last one I wrote was Fall, and I posted that one, but that was like, uh, you know, when I write, I'm kind of in that that mood. And so it's it's been okay that I haven't been in that mood. So, uh, you know, maybe quarantine's keeping me a little bit more busy, but the comic book tour is keeping me hope. It's giving me hope, and it's giving me that 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 human interaction, dude, and I need it, man. I go out there, and I'm like, oh, my God, people. I'm signing a real toy. I do V-shouts. I got a V-shout Thursday, and I got hundreds of V-shouts to do. People sending their toys. I'm signing it, saying, hey, Joe, here's I signed your toy. Thank you, and hundreds of V-shouts. I love it, but there's nothing better than you handing me a toy. Well, I can't wait for people to see you live, mainly because they have the new uh, Green Ranger that's coming out. There's some more Draken stuff. There's a, yeah. a Draken action figure, I, I mean, Evolution yeah. 3. So crazy stuff, man. In this quarantine time, I appreciate you taking the time out for this no watch. Problem. It was fun reliving this episode and talking about your brother because I, I don't feel like you, you, you don't really get the platform to do it all that I much. I don't, yeah. It's you covered a lot of stories. And when you did, I was like, oh, man, you always covered a lot of my brother, which was really cool and which I like random because I got ADD. Did you see the Green Ranger car and the Green Ranger toy together? The Green Ranger car? Yeah. No. I bought five on eBay. It's the Green Ranger, and maybe it's the Japanese footage, but it's a really cool – I forgot what kind of car. Uh, but they're, they're legit. I mean, it's got the Green Ranger, and it's got a Green Ranger toy with all the – you Google it afterwards, Green Ranger – and Green Ranger toy. It's a new toy that they put out. Interesting. I have not seen yeah. that. The last one I saw was that Draken figure. I was blown away by it. Yeah. Check it out. I don't know. I've never seen that car before. So maybe it's got to be Japanese footage or maybe it doesn't exist. Maybe they just made it up. But I wish I had a car like that toy they're selling. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure you'll get one pretty soon, though. But uh, I, I got 10 off eBay, so I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's going to do it for us, guys. Thank you so much for joining us on this Morphin Monday. Uh, this is going to be our, our new format here. It's a live watch long. And Jason David Frank, thank you so much for joining us, man. I appreciate it. And we will show chat very soon. But stay on the line because you and I are going to talk All a little bit. All right, buddy.